What's going on, fellow vets? Brian Reese here, the VA Claims Insider, coming at you live from Austin, Texas. And today I'm going to be sharing our VA disability cuts coming. What veterans really need to know about the five proposed cuts uh, in the CBO's report. So look, here's the bottom line. I'm going to go through each of these five proposals to cut your benefits in detail, and I'm going to explain them uh, and give you the information that you really need to know. But just to get started, I don't think any of these proposals have a realistic chance of passing in Congress. Okay. Now, the part, though, that is shameful to me, embarrassing to me, and you should be really upset about it, is the fact that all sides of the aisle are even thinking about politicizing our benefits. It's wrong, it's shameful, and it needs to stop now, okay? We, VA Claims Insider, continue to fight not only to protect your existing VA benefits, but also to expand them, all right? And I will never stop fighting for you. That is my promise to you right here, right now. I don't care what it takes. I don't care who comes at us. We will not rest. We will never stop fighting for you and your benefits. All right, let's talk about these five proposed VA benefit cuts. Bottom line is this, gang. Our veterans deserve better. Mental health, we got a mental health crisis not only in this country, but among the veteran population. Suicide issues. U.S. military veterans are more than 50% likely to take their own life than somebody who didn't wear the uniform. What all of these proposals have failed to discuss is the issue of mental health. All they want to focus on is the fact that VA disability benefits are going up. Duh. VA disability benefits are going up because Iraq, Afghanistan, Middle East, fellow vets who served in the last 20 years of war overseas are coming home and are now dealing with major mental health issues, major physical issues, and they're filing rightful claims for those issues because our country made a decision to send us to war. There are consequences of going to war. This is one of them. VA disability benefits are absolutely going up and they should go up and they should continue to go up and rightfully so, okay? Because veterans have major mental health issues and physical issues. That's the one thing I wanted to address, gang, that none of these proposals even address. They don't even talk about it as a possibility. And to me, that's wrong and that's shameful. And what can you do about it? You can go to your elected officials in the house in your district for whatever state you live in. Okay, you can search for them online, send them a note and tell them that not only should there be no cuts to benefits for veterans, they should be expanded. I also recommend you do the same thing to the senators in your state so that they know that this is wrong and cuts to VA benefits, cuts to veteran benefits should never under any circumstance be considered. All right, let's talk about these issues. Proposal number one, removing VA disability pay for veterans who work. Again, this one is absolute crap to me. Why? Because there's now gonna be a disincentive for veterans who work, who are actually wanting to provide for their families. That's wrong. That is absolutely wrong, okay? So here's what CBO Proposal 1 is proposing, that starting in January 2024, to reduce VA disability benefits payments if your gross household income is over $125,000 per year. Now remember that gross household income includes all income, okay? That's income from you, your spouse, and any dependents in the past year. Bottom line is, this is crap. We're against it. I don't think it has any chance of passing. 
and we're fighting for you, but I'm also asking for your help to help fight for fellow veterans by letting your House and Senate members know about it. Okay, now real quick, here's what they're proposing. In addition to uh, January 2024, $125,000 gross household income, in the previous year, if your household income was above that, so household income is above $125,000 per year, your benefits would gradually decrease with a reduction of $1 for an additional $2 earned above the income threshold. Again, this is a disincentive to work. And I think this is wrong. It's, it's not even addressed. It's not even talked about. At a time when mental health issues, physical pain, veterans like us, we leave the service, we lose our purpose. We need something to do. We need contribution to a mission. We want to feel important again, like we matter, like our service wasn't for naught and that our country still cares about us. And one of the ways, the biggest ways we do that is by working. Absolutely shameful that this is even being talked about. Proposal two, ending TDIU, okay, the 100% disability payment rates for veterans who can't work once they hit retirement age. Now, there's a couple of ways that this would potentially impact you, and I want to read this uh, right out of the proposal. Okay, there's, there's two ways that the TDIU proposal could impact you. So under the first proposal, the VA would stop making TDIU payments to veterans who are 67 years of age or older. This restriction would apply to both current and future recipients. So basically when you hit age 67, your disability payments would revert to the amount associated with your rated disability level. If you're age 67 or older and receiving TDIU payments, you would no longer get them. Okay, as of the date of whenever this bill would pass. Uh, the second alternative would affect veterans who start receiving TDIU payments after this December. So December 2023. Uh, in this case, you'd no longer get TDIU payments once you hit age 67. And no new applicants who are 67 years of age or older would be eligible to get TDIU payments after that date. Uh, veterans currently receiving TDIU payments who reach 67 or older as of the effective date would have the option, okay? Again, this is crap. It's not taking into consideration what VA disability is even for and what TDIU is for. TDIU pays a disabled veteran at the 100% rate even though their combined disability rating is not 100%. And the reason they do this is because your service-connected disabilities are so debilitating that you cannot maintain substantially gainful employment, okay? It doesn't even take that into consideration. And to me, uh, that angers me again. If you can't work because of your service-connected disabilities, uh, and now they're proposing to remove those payments, I, again, mental and physical issues among our veteran population, I think this is total crap. Uh, and I don't think it has any chance of passing. Proposal three, taxing <laughs> our VA disability payments. One of the awesome things about VA disability compensation pay right now is the fact that it's tax-free at both the state and federal level. Now, of course, they're proposing under number three to tax your disability payments. This would directly harm veterans. Every single U.S. military veteran who's receiving disability compensation right now, there's about 5.2 to 5.4 million veterans and family members and surviving spouses who rely on this income in the full amount every month. Um, again, I think this is total crap, uh, and I don't think it should pass. It also sends a terrible message to veterans that, hey, we don't actually fully appreciate or recognize your services, because even though we used to not tax the payments, now we're going to tax them. Again, I think it's wrong. Uh, it's crap. And I don't think taxing disability payments is a good idea. And I don't think it has any chance of passing. Proposal four is to end VA disability compensation period for veterans with a 10% or 20% rating. So basically, proposal four from the CBO is that uh, if a veteran has a, a 10 or 20% rating, those would no longer be compensable levels. Again, I think this is wrong. 
because a lot of times a veteran with a 10 or 20% rating should actually be rated much higher than that, okay? So a tiny monthly payment can usually help a lot, especially as a veteran is trying to gather evidence to go for an increase that they're rightfully owed, okay? And again, I think this is total crap. They're, to try to cut a veteran at the low end of the payment scale, um, it's it's shameful. It undermines uh, and destructs the critical financial support that we need, and it undermines the recognition that veterans so badly deserve for their service to our country, and it's, it's wrong. Uh, and finally, Proposal 5, reducing VA disability compensation by 30% once veterans hit Social Security retirement age. So here's here's exactly what they're saying. As a veteran, if you begin receiving disability compensation payments in 2024 or later, this proposal would directly impact you. So once you reach 67, that's Social Security full retirement age, your VA disability compensation payments would be reduced by 30%. Again, they, they don't give any rationale as to why they chose the number 30%. None. They just decided, you know, throw a, throw a dart at a dartboard, we're going to reduce them by 30%. <laughs> Again, there's no consideration at all given to veterans' mental health issues, physical pain. Um, it's, again, wrong, absolutely wrong. And we will take a stand for you. We will fight for you because now more than ever, our veterans need support to protect and expand their benefits, not to reduce them. And it is absolutely wrong that these proposals are even being considered. And again, how can you help? You can contact your elected officials in the House and in the Senate uh, to make sure that these proposals don't pass. We are uh, vehemently against this and we will never stop fighting for you. I will never stop fighting for your benefits. Okay, talk to y'all soon. Thanks so much.